What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Today we have a, a stream that has been a long time coming, trust me. We have Richard of hamstudy.org, Signal Stuff, and Exam Tools. Is there a thing that this man is not involved in? Well, we'll find out today. So get ready with your questions. This is a live stream, so we're watching the chat. If you have questions coming up, uh, make sure to post them. We'll take them live. We'll have a lot of fun. So enjoy the memes, and we'll get started soon. Yes, Jeff, it is Saturday. My whole weekend's upside down because my podcast schedule got all screwed up. But hey, thanks, everybody, for making it out. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course for another live stream here on Saturday. Always trying to give you the information to either get you started at Ham Radio, keep you going, or help you find out something new that you may not have known about. Right up the top, the links are in the description for Signal Stuff. They make the Signal Stick, obviously, but there are other antennas, too, that we'll be talking about. My favorite handheld antenna, it's usually on all of my HTs when I'm out in the field, when it's on my backpack, slopping around all over the place. Won't poke your eye at, well, I guess you could poke your eye at if you tried enough. We'll talk about that later, but generally works really, really great on all HTs. We've tested them. There are videos as far as signal to noise ratio on both 70 centimeters and two meters. So don't worry, we'll get to talking to Richard here soon. But a couple of things to mention. Hamtactical.com, the website my wife runs for the merch store. Uh, we're out of the Christmas season, finally. Thank you, Leah, for updating. Now, I, I did post uh, a little teaser that we do have via PVC patches, and they will go on that website soon. So I don't have a date that they'll drop yet because that's uh, Leah's domain, and I'm definitely not going to tell her how to do her job. That would be uh, bad for my health. So when it does get posted, I'll let you know. I'll post on the socials and whatnot. I had quite a day, though. We're going to do a, a quick little tangent here. Check this out. Oh yeah, I love that color. That's great. That's awesome. So yes, I just took the delivery of my Ford Lightning F-150. I put in the order in April of 2021, I think. And yeah, who stole the engine? There's no engine. It's electric. So yeah, I got it. Oh my gosh. I've never, I've never been in a truck or any vehicle for that matter that is as powerful as this thing is. That thing is scary. It is scary fast. So we'll definitely be making videos talking about, you know, putting ham radio into that thing. Don't worry. Look forward to that. But who buddy? Anyway, enough of all that. What's going on? Want a quick reminder here, hamstudy.org. If you haven't, it's the place to be for practicing your to get your ham radio license, a free website for testing. And then, of course, Signal Stuff, which there's a link in the description. All right, without further ado, Richard, how's it going, man? Are you muted? I forgot to unmute. It's oh, we well. did it. We did it. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> well, so uh, I've been using your antennas for years now, about the time, I guess, that you started making them. But you're doing so much stuff. And I got a bunch of questions, as I normally do. The first thing, and I, and I, I think people, so, one, I don't think people realize that you are hamstudy.org. You are exam tools, which is used for online testing. And you are signal stuff. You're all the things. So what came first, the hamstudy.org or the signal stuff? So the funny thing about that is I could almost make a solid argument for any of the three having come first. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. The first time I made uh, an antenna of the design that is now, that, that eventually grew into what we call the signal stick, was uh, probably like 25 plus years ago. Um, really? So there was actually a, an amateur radio explorer post in Utah County. Uh, so youth group mm -hmm. that I joined when I was uh, 16, 17, something like that. Um, the woman who is now my wife was a member. Actually, that's where we first met uh, long before we started seeing each other or anything. But I, I did actually meet my wife through ham radio. Uh, and she has been licensed longer than I have, KC7KEI. Really? Um, licensed before and you? So, okay. 
Yeah, well, I, I took all three of my license exams from her father. Ah, uh, so okay. this is kind of a long, yeah. I'm, it was I'm a very, foredrawn you know, conclusion long, that you would as get far ham radio as, license. Uh, right? How many years? Um, well, and I mean, ham radio runs in my family. My grandfather was licensed when uh, K7 SG Russ Bateman got his license. Wow. As uh, I think he's had something like 40 call signs because they used to have to change whenever he moved. Right. Anyway, 1948. Oh, wow. Uh, and my father got his in, in 1976. Um, so, I mean, it's both, yeah, lots and lots of ham radio feeding into it. But at any rate, so the the antennas kind of took a parallel track. Uh, originally, I, was, I be, eventually became one of the leaders of the youth group. And I had been interested in building the the antennas, the the Explorer Post antennas, as they were called then. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, event at, at one point, I ended up taking over, like locating the parts to build them, finding the stainless steel piano wire, and the uh, the connect the SMA connectors and the BNC connectors. And uh, I mean, we went from soldering them and had a solder part pot and, you know, all sorts of different things like that. And just over the years, I found like one new thing, another new thing. You know, I, I, uh, I discovered night and all. And, and for a while we were using that and I was paying like $5 per wire off of Amazon at first. Wow. Um, and then just at, at one point, and this was probably, I don't know, 2012, 2013, something like that. Uh, we just didn't have enough youth to keep the Explorer post going. Uh, it was kind of sad, but we ended up shutting it down. Mm-hmm. But we had always had this thing where we sold the antennas locally, and if they ever broke, we'd just replace it. You know, it was lifetime warranty. That was always the thing, is mm-hmm. you know, for the Explorer post antennas, um, because that was how we funded the Explorer post. And I mean, we'd do these huge builds, you know, we'd get together and we'd make like 40 or 50 of them, and uh, you know, and, and so that was just, that was this thing that we were doing. And when we shut it down, people kept asking me for the antennas. Like, so, right. you know, are people still doing the Explorer Post antennas? Can I still buy these? And I was like, well, okay, I'll start selling them. And I talked to the other former leaders of the Explorer Post and they were all fine with me uh, taking over this. And I said, well, you know, I mean, I, I don't feel good using it just like for my own you know, commercial purposes, but ham study is this thing I've been working on for a while now. And can I use it to fund things for ham study? And so I took it over for that. And it was, I think, 2016, uh, there was a ham fest in Southern Utah that I went to. And uh, gosh, we sold a lot of antennas there. I think it was like 84, 85, something like that. You know, lots. I mean, it was a big build. Mm-hmm. almost 100 antennas that we made at one time that time um back using our our plasti dip and uh popsicle sticks to form the 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 adhesive around the connectors and um and so while I was talking to people there there was a bunch of people from like you know southern utah and further away from utah county that were asking well is there is there an online place where i can order these or anything i was like yeah well here's a here's a thing and I'll, I'll see if I can post them online somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so I started selling them online and I set up the, uh, the signal stuff website, um, there in 2006 and 16, I was actually initially calling steady antennas, but I quickly realized that that was a bad plan because ham study needed to remain as a, like as a learning resource, not as a commercial entity with like that we brand things that we sell, especially because that could create uh, conflicts of interests with uh, advertising sure. and, you know, things like that. You know, ICOM wasn't particularly excited about the idea of of sponsoring a website that was building and selling things for competing products. It wasn't a good image. It wasn't, you know, it didn't make sense. Right. And um, so I have a friend, uh, his name is Michael Stuffelbeam. And some of his siblings were over and they're all hams. And he's he's helped me a lot with both ham study and with uh, signal sticks over the years. Mm-hmm. And we were just brainstorming. It's like, what are we going to call these? And uh, I, I don't even remember how the name was suggested, but that's where si- signal stuff came up was, was kind of a play on his last name, Stuff will be. Ah, OK. And then someone else says, and, and there'll be signal sticks. Sure. We're like, oh, yeah. and they're 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 super elastic signal sticks. And, and it just, I mean, things went downhill from there and the name was, was created. 
And so, I mean, it was that that's kind of the story of signal sticks, but it's very parallel to yeah. the story of exam tools and ham study because it's like they were, I, I, I started doing it with the intent of supporting ham study. And of course, exam tools, if, okay. it, if it ever took off. Right. Right. But, uh, but it was almost by accident. Like I, I accidentally created a successful business. I didn't really mean to. I wonder how I many planning on it. I wonder how many like sole proprietor small businesses start out almost by accident, where people are like, "You mean I could make money doing this? Yeah, like people will pay me to do this kind of thing." Now, given the date ranges that you just gave me, that predates the mass kind of movement of three D printing. Because so much of what you were doing most recently, and now you're doing injection molding, mm -hmm. but that's even pre-3D printing. So you've been making these oh, for yeah. a while now, right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no. So, uh, in fact, you know, over the years, I mean, we could talk for like an hour on just the evolution of the process of building these things. Um, but uh, the 3D printing was one of the big game changers. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and like so many other things I do... I didn't plan that out as, hmm, 3D printing is probably going to change this. And I bet that's, no. What I did is I got this unexpected bonus at work. And I was oh, like, you know, nice, nice. we usually spend these things responsibly. I'm going to have fun with this one. And I looked around and I said, I'm going to buy a 3D printer. So I ordered a 3D printer. And then I got sitting down and I was like, okay, I've just ordered this 3D printer. There has to be something I can I can do with it to justify having the thing. Right. So I don't have to right. feel bad about having this right. 3D printer. Right. You, you did the thing buying something cool. And now you're like, how do I justify this to the wife? Exactly. I know this feeling. I know this feeling. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I talked to the wife about it first. And in fact, oh, my wife course. actually yes, has an associate's course. degree in drafting. So oh, one of my cool. thoughts was maybe we can work on things together. Yeah. Um, and just with the kids, we actually haven't had much time to do that. I don't right. know if you know I have five kids or not um, i didn't know five i know you had kids but yeah. five is yeah that's an impressive amount of time yeah, yeah. I, I know just having two is a lot for me so so we haven't had uh we haven't had much time to to work on things that way and you know not that i don't discuss things with her and get ideas and stuff but uh but she hasn't actually worked on any of the designs but um uh, but yeah so that's that's really how it started with the 3d printing is, is just yeah. I need to I need to do something to justify having this and right and some of the early designs were almost disastrous. In fact, oh, he's got prototypes. That's awesome. He's going to show us. He's going to show us the have, uh, the museum of signal stick. I have a couple. I have more, but I think I moved some of them. Here's one, one of the earlier ones. So first of all, I don't know if you'll be able to see a little this. Little bit, yeah, a little bit. Let's see, maybe. Oh, maybe. there you go. Uh, yeah, real uh, small plastic body, well. and it looks like so it's So this SMA. is actually not yeah. plastic. This is actually, this is Plastidip. So oh. this is how, before 3D printing, this is how they worked. They were Plastidip uh, on the SMA connection? Yeah, so you see this tip? That yep. is actually a ball of hot glue. Oh, Plastidip awesome. in blue Plastidip. Yeah. Um, and uh, that kind of helps. Yeah. Anyway, and this is an SMA mail. Yep. Uh, and what I would do is I would get one of our old style SMA female. Let me see. I, I, I love the ingenuity these. of let's just figure out the materials at the parts, the plastic dip, uh, a flex seal. We're going to put some flex seal on this. <clears throat> right. Well, you know, because you can't get the plastic dip inside. So right. I had these old, uh, these SMA female to female barrels uh-huh was i mean when when uh sma female antennas came out mm -hmm. um i was not convinced that uh you know this is because we always see things uh clearly in the future right. i was not convinced that that it was really going to end up with a lot of radios using sma female and i was like i don't want to deal with another connector type right. and so i was really resistant for a long time to to doing SMA female parts. And this is uh, and so BNC instead, before that? This is prior BNC? Uh, no, this is this is uh, SMA, SMA male. I mean, BNC, we barely sold any BNC. Nobody okay. wanted BNC. Um, and so I'd have these, and they came with these red caps. Mm -hmm. And so I would plast I would just dip this whole thing oh, in plastic. Oh, okay. And then set it out, and then use a razor knife to cut that off, and then I would do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a and real so, high I mean, yield that was... process. That's you're you're just cooking oh, yeah. through a, doing it I that mean, way, right? We, we'd, 
in in four or five hours with three or four of us working on it, we could do, you know, probably like 100, maybe 120 of these Whoa, things. Okay, and then I don't have to spend two or three hours later doing the Plasti Dip uh-huh. after the adhesive had cured. Because, you know, you can't do it while the adhesive hasn't cured. Of course. Um, and so we actually, we took these blocks of wood and drilled holes in them that we could set the, the connector in. Got and it. then use JB Weld uh, adhesive, epoxy. Um, because it was it was thixotropic enough, thick enough that it wouldn't drip too much. Right. You know, it would kind of drip in, but it would mostly stay there. Uh huh. And so the three D printed stuff actually was mainly intended to solve that problem. Like okay. specifically, it was. I need some way to hold the adhesive where it is. I tried putting tape around it. I tried uh, I tried using like this clay adhesive. Uh, you okay. know, epoxy stuff that like yeah. you mold around it. We like tried a whole bunch of stuff. Like you need it together. You need it together. Like yeah, exactly. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so the the uh, the whole point with the uh, so here's one of the earliest 3D, 3D printed. printed ones. Yeah, yeah. The whole point was that it would just hold the adhesive in place. You can see this one doesn't have a hole in the side like all my new ones do. Yeah. Um. So what we do is, as I was putting it together, we would. I, I got these little syringes, and so okay. we'd pull, put the, we'd load the adhesive into the syringe, and then I'd squirt this, the adhesive down into the connector, and then slide the, you know, into the, the glue cap is what yep. I actually call these still, right. okay, and then we'd slide the glue cap up onto it, and then set it out to, uh, to cure, uh, and okay. but that was, I mean, that was game changing because now not only was it much more consistent as far as like the adhesive would be in the right spot. So there's a lot fewer errors, right? But uh, everything looked mainly the same and, um, and they didn't have to be vertical anymore. Like before we were using these blocks of wood and like setting up vertically Mm -hmm. and I'd have to clean it up like with a sharp knife later on after it had cured enough, not to move, but not so much that I couldn't cut it anymore. Right. Uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, that was a big thing. And then, I had a neighbor who he, he actually uh, worked for me for a while um, in 2021. Uh, he did most of our order fulfillment for most of the year, but he he was he came and helped out quite a bit for years. And he used to work with he was an engineer who worked with adhesives and plastics. And um, and when he saw the way that I was mixing these things, he just about had a fit. It's like <laughs> I was like, oh, just mix it, you know, half and half. He's like by weight by volume by what do you mean half and half it's like i'm like i he's like no you have to be precise you cannot <laughs> and so he kind of overhauled the way that i was doing my adhesive mm-hmm. and then he suggested well you know if you put a hole in the side you can just inject the adhesive in right and i hated that idea okay and Until i you kept tried thinking it. about the idea and i kept thinking about the idea and finally i realized Okay, that solves a lot of problems, and right. now that's what we do. And I've managed to get the hole much smaller than it used to be by using these uh, these tips that get a lot smaller. But uh, but with that, it takes it from it used to be that adhesive was like the single highest failure rate point mm-hmm. uh, point of the process. Right. That basically I or one of a couple people that. I knew uh, that I trusted who'd been doing it for a long time. They were adhesive uh, One of us had to do it. Right. Um, and now it's like, you can't mess this up. Just do it like this. Wait until it comes out. Clean anything, any extra stuff out. And and with time, you'll get to where there's less cleanup to do. And it'll just, and right. it'll just work. Right. And, uh, you know, I mean, now it's, it's to the point where, I mean, I probably, uh, you know, in four hours start to finish i can probably make two or three hundred antennas by myself wow that's a little more if my kids are helping wow Um, that's you know just because we've we've (laughs) we've simplified so many things you know i don't have to use a hot glue gun and try to to shape this ball on the tip anymore and yeah because you've got instead we've we've got these injection molded now right injection molded tips but i mean even when it was 3d printed that was another reason that it sure made such a big difference is in a lot of ways i actually liked the look of the of the hot glue tips better Mm -hmm. but it wasn't repeatable 
I mean, it was like, it was a pain in the neck. I mean, it's right. not so bad to do like one or two, but right. you do a hundred of those things. It's like an artisan and... thing versus a bloop, pop mm-hmm. the thing on, let it harden and you're done. Yeah. Really quick, I want to say thank you to the carries for the super chat. He says, happy new year. By the way, if someone's in the chat, I'll have to go back and look. They're saying, Chuk Mung Namoy, which is uh, Vietnamese for happy new year or tut, which is coming up. And then you've got Gong Hei Fa Choi for uh, Chinese New Year, which is right around the corner next week, actually. Uh, he's asking, is there an April camp date? So yeah, it's going to be, I think, the last weekend in April. Leia is making the website, I promise. It's all in work. It's it's all in work. Just if you do need to pencil something in, last weekend in April is what I believe she's aiming for. So appreciate that, the Carries. Thanks. So Richard, you have, I believe I understand this, you have a software development background. That's kind of like your bread and butter, right? And I think the last 15 minutes or so, you've been talking about like heavy materials and production and all that stuff. So you probably didn't start out like this, right? This is something that kind of evolved over time. And it sounds like you've been doing it with other people, other hands evolving constantly, right? Through the whole thing. So uh, what's that been like constantly of kind of evolving your process? Is it it's just just a way of life now that you're constantly ready to 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 embrace the change. You know, I think there was probably a period of six or seven years where if you bought an antenna, like every six months, each antenna would be subtly different. Like because I was just constantly just constant changing evolution. the. Uh, I mean the, the the connectors, the the models that we use for the connectors now are. I think I've probably completely redid each of those models at least eight or nine times. Mm -hmm. And that's aside from like little incremental changes that I made over time Mm -hmm. Um, of, you know, we, I, I'd see a problem that just kept cropping up. Yeah. And so finally I'd say, okay, this is actually a real problem. It's not just a few flukes. We need to change this. And I'd make a change and then something else would crop up and then something else, you know, it's just over time. And, um, once we hit the point where I could actually customize the connectors, that was actually a really big deal too. You know, I used to just use standard coax connectors. In fact, the the manufacturer was really confused when I wanted to order them without the crimp ferrules and without the, you know, I was like, I don't need any of that stuff. I just need the tips and the housings. I don't need the heat shrink. I don't need, you know. Um, and they're but, like, uh, what is this guy doing? Here, let me give you the full shot. Yeah, there so. Second. Here's uh that's the BNC, not right? Real easy to see, but this is the BNC connector, which I just happened to have one in my pocket. Yeah. I just remembered. <laughs> Good um, to have on hand. Uh, yeah. I don't it's know focusing on your anyway, fingers. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can kind of see that it's not as long as, as most, and it's yeah. got like this little fat thing at the bottom. Mm-hmm. So the fat thing is to give it so that I can have some little nubs on the plastic. So when it goes down, it'll clip on and stay in place. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there, there's a little, a little flange kind of on the side. end, right? Yeah, there's a little flange on the end. That's a, the adhesive has something to grab onto. Nice. And then the most recent change is that there's a flat on each side at the top, which is to keep it from uh, being able to rotate inside the adhesive. Yes. Um, yes. Some people who got a SMA female or SMA male maybe two years ago uh, may have had a problem where the the glue cap would actually spin Mm -hmm. the plastic would spin and the metal would not Um, Uh, gotcha okay and so it's uh you know i mean just little things like that where it's like well the antenna is solid you know because there's this solid adhesive inside but it's just that there wasn't enough to grab onto Mm -hmm. and so it could actually you know even with the adhesive solid there it could still spin around without grabbing the the metal part Um, and so that, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just been this constant thing of, of trying to focus on, well, do we have a lot of returns and and repairs, you know, because I mean, it's a lifetime warranty, right? Right. I still sometimes replace parts, an antenna that's seven or eight years old. Um, and it just finally failed or finally broke. That should be mentioned too. (laughs) This is, uh, generally lifetime warranty, uh, for you mm-hmm. and the and the signal stick, so that's that's amazing. Yeah, Digital that's, dreamer, that's, that's, that's my lifetime. Chat. So <laughs> if if I'm right. dead, I right. make no promises on my errors. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, good but, good clarification. <laughs> so so there's that on the one side, and then on the other side, 
it's been this constant thing is like I mentioned to you in the when we were kind of chatting before it started mm -hmm. that a couple of years ago when you did that live stream uh, uh I think it was titled something like the first thing I do with any uh yes with yes. With, with any HT yes is I'd put on one of these adapters that's right um and we have some really nice ones but uh I just had an explosion of sales after that, like <laughs> for the BNC like five yep. times normal for the next three weeks, <laughs> almost entirely on BNC. Now, let me tell you, before that point, if I were to do a breakdown, I sold probably, you know, 30 percent of what I sold was probably SMA, maybe 30, 40 percent was SMA female. 30, 40% was SMA male. I think usually female was a little ahead of SMA male. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, 10 to 20% was BNC. Okay. Last year, I think 60 to 70% of what I sold was BNC. That's And crazy. I can trace that specifically to that, <laughs> that live stream. Um, like it just completely, like I, I had to, I had to get more parts. And I mean, w when I order parts, I order like 5,000 at a time. Right. I'm, I'm at a point and this is for a business that started the way that mine did. This is mind blowing to me. If I need to replace all of my invent, like all of my, my manufacturing inventory, all of the night and all, all of the connectors, uh, and all of the adhesive we're probably looking at something like 40 to $45,000 of this is my standard order size. Wow. That is I a mean, huge because, number. You know, in, in order to get the customizations that I need, in order to have enough on hand, especially once I started doing the colors, which incidentally kind of started from some mostly joking comments in the, uh, the VE Discord server a couple years back. Um, that I just decided, Hey, we'll look into it. And, and next thing you knew, I had, um, I kid you not 70,000 meters of heat shrink coming from China. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have six kilometers of pink heat shrink customized. That... So it's double thick wall. Okay. <laughs> that is intense. That is a lot. Uh, somebody was asking in the chat, what is the, can I link the stream uh, for the BNC connector video? It wasn't a stream. It was just a standalone video. And I think it was called um, um, the first thing I do to upgrade a handheld. And it was to put that BNC adapter on. And I was showing the signal stick is, is generally the antenna that I put on all my radios. And I use the BNC model. And that was uh, not as popular apparently back then. So we set kind of a, we set kind of a standard, I guess, from uh, from that standpoint. So, yeah. and, and I will say mm -hmm. that, that that kind of threw me off at Hamvention this year. Yeah, uh, it's the first thing to do to upgrade, and I just found it. Yes, and I've just linked it in the chat. Oh, great. Um. Anyway, the the proportions were not changed at Hamvention; they okay. are changed online. So, I actually sold more SMA mail than BNC at Hamvention. Yes. And I didn't bring as much as everything of everything as I should have because mm -hmm. of that, because I expected that it would be mostly, uh, the, you know, the, that it would be the same proportion. So different markets are interesting. Oh, for to, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could totally well. see that. Because yeah. Ham, uh, Hamvention, while there are people that are familiar with me at Hamvention, it's not the same as the amount of people that watch the videos online, right? It's, a, it's almost completely different group of people, right? So I can see that. That that makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, so talking about the antenna, it sounds like obviously the production of it, the the putting it together and the materials and all that, that's gone through many revisions. But it at the the antenna parts, if you will, how did you design the antenna? How did you design it to be two meters, seventy centimeter? And I think you have other options as well. But what was that process like? And has that gone through revision? Not sure if I should admit this publicly. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> okay, so there is a design. If in fact I, you know, I haven't actually done this search, but I bet if you look up piano wire antenna, oh, you'll okay. probably find it. Okay. It's a classic design where you basically just buy a piece of piano wire mm -hmm. and you stick a center pin on it and you stick sure. it in the connector. Yep. And that's your antenna. Sure. I mean, Congratulations. Yeah. I've just told you how to make a signal stick. 
I mean, it's kind of like um, DX Commander, right? DX Commander is just making the the kits that he sells that people can build the DX Commander. It's it's a similar thing, except yours, you actually got to glue stuff and all that. So there's a little more hand tooling on what goes into your stuff, right? A, a lot more uh, and, and less hand tooling anymore. Um, in fact, I actually toyed with the idea of making kits at one point, mm -hmm. except that your the failure rate of kits would just be so high because there's right. so many ways that you can make mistakes on it. Right. Um, I'd have to send extra center pens and I'd I mean, it was just, it would be, it would be kind of ridiculous. I mean, I'm, I'm using, I'm using 400 milliliter cartridges of adhesive and, uh, do I have it around here? Oh, I have a, a pneumatic dispenser that I thought I had sitting next to here that um, that I'm working on building into like a stand-based one. I have one, uh, I have two stand-based ones, mm -hmm. one that has been given to my manufacturer and uh, and I'm working on building a second spare just because we had some uh, some parts break on my main one last week. And I thought, you know, I need a, I, I need a backup just in case. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, there's just so many parts that, uh, that if you were to try to do it the way that I do these just one at a time, it is incredibly inefficient. It's like in order to make it efficient, you have to be doing hundreds of them. Well, yeah, um, and, and just the adhesive alone, because what are you going to like? You're going to provide people just a little baggie of adhesive like because you don't need a lot of adhesive for this. No, you really yeah. don't. No, yeah. in fact, uh, I also have some some handheld applicators. And when I use that, I can probably get 100 to 120 antennas out of one 50 milliliter cartridge yeah um or like a thousand to fifteen hundred out of the 400 milliliter maybe more um but it's like yeah that 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 tube is probably 30 bucks and then you need the applicator which is 40 bucks and right. then you need the the mix tube and then you need the the lure lock uh tip and and that's just the adhesive and you know heat shrink like mm -hmm. doing things in mass the heat shrink was probably it was for a long time the single biggest problem like i i manufactured 3d printed like this little guillotine thing for cutting heat shrink at okay. one point so it's like you pulled it out we had tape on the table you like pull it out and hit it pull it out and hit it pull it out and hit it you know so i'd, I'd have 15 volunteers from the the community come over because for a long long time signal sticks were all made with volunteers until covid started yes um, i remember you telling me and, that and we would have like two people just making that um somebody was talking about uh lionel was talking about a signal stick knockoff there is actually a youtube video about making a signal stick knockoff that i offered some comments on how to improve um <laughs> Yeah, because you know I'm I'm here about educating people, right? Yeah. Ham study, sure. My ham studies hat and my my signal stuck hat. We get in fights sometimes. It's all good. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so when I got to where I could get that pre-cut, that was awesome. But then yeah. when I ordered, started ordering it, you know, thousands of you know, thousands of meters at a time, mm -hmm. I ended up ordering a heat shrink cutter. And okay. machine that actually, you know, goes out and cuts it, um, which has been mostly pretty good, except for when my son cut his, the tip of his finger off on Christmas a few years ago. That was less ideal. Um, fortunately, he has recovered. They stitched it back on. Oh, it my goodness. Okay. It was surprisingly uh, good, um, all things considered. But, oh, that's uh, scary. That's scary. Yeah, that was, I tell you, as, as a dad, that is a an image that is... Go into a emergency place room. In my head. Yeah. Um, go, go into an emergency room with a child that's sick or hurt is always a, with, a harrowing With the experience. tip of his finger. I mean, it was only a few millimeters thick, but still. Uh, my my son uh, found, do you know what a bread lame is? Bread lame? I'm not familiar with that. No. It's a handle that holds a razor blade. And he uh -huh. reached into a drawer and pulled the handle out, and his hand was on the side of the Ooh. drawer, and he drug it across his finger. And he started screaming, and is run Maybe instead of covering it. Trigger warnings before we started this. Yeah, that, conversation. sorry, sorry. It, <laughs> instead of covering it and running into the bedroom, we're asleep, and he's like flinging his arm all over the place. There's blood everywhere. That was a harrowing moment. So sorry, everybody oh. in the chat for the visuals on that one. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, now I lost your, 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 what you were talking about. Oh, cutter, anyway, cutter for the, so, the heat shrink. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, lots of specialized tools, but the, um, but the heat shrink, like. 
shrinking it. I mean, for a long time, we did it with a handheld heat gun, like the, mm -hmm. the 7 to $14, I forget, one that you can get from Harbor Freight. Because I oh, haven't yeah. found any others that actually worked consistently better. And literally, I'd get to where I could like stick it between my knees, so, you know, because you need the air intake from underneath, and it would have the reflector shield. And I got to where I could take like four of these antennas and gradually slide it through. Mm -hmm. And I somehow managed to do that without burning myself, but I could never teach anyone else how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, there's all these things that I've just done so many times that I can do them, but I can't teach anyone else how to do them because they're not things that should even be possible. Yep. Um, and so then for a while, we use, we, we got some, uh, some little uh, aluminum channel and we figured out we could lay them down in the aluminum channel and okay. kind of go over with the heat gun there. And that would let us do five or six at a time. But I mean, even still, when you're talking about making hundreds of these, that is a huge, huge bottleneck. Yeah. So let me make sure and I understand. So, let me make sure I understand. Are you inserting the piano wire into the pre-shrunk tubing and then stretching it out and heating it and then cutting? No, no. So this okay. is you cut the heat shrink. Cut the heat shrink to size. And then the you, you slide want. the heat shrink onto the onto the onto the wire, which is pre-cut. So you have pre-cut pre heat shrink, okay. pre-cut wire. Okay. <laughs> And then, and then you stick the that through the heat to to shrink the the heat shrink onto the wire. Then glue in order it all to, up. Uh, and, and and then you glue it all up. Okay. But, okay. Uh, I mean that was a really slow process. And finally, um, I mean I've been looking for something for years, but you you when you don't know the names of things, <laughs> finding something is really really hard. Right. So there's this thing called a heat shrink tunnel that's used sure. in shrink wrap packaging okay that yeah. actually works really well I mean, okay it's it like 2500 bucks oh it takes my up goodness. a lot of room in my garage right right and it's not by itself a solution i then had to manufacture using uh 3d modeling and uh, i have a, a cnc a desktop cnc uh, mill uh -huh. um, oh wow a okay router. a router might have done it but uh you know it was a desktop cnc mill okay that i used to manufacture the end parts and then use threaded rods to assemble anyway I could run and grab one of these if you really wanted me to, but they're out in the garage. <laughs> I trust they're, you. Uh, yeah. They're these these uh, trays that have 20 slots okay. that hold the wire in place and put a gap at the end because you need the adhesive to bond to the metal and to the heat shrink. That's right. something we learned after a lot of, of uh, returns. From, so you get a little uh, bit of the metal fail. peeking out. A little bit of the metal peeking out. And, yeah. And, 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 okay. Like you have to needs very specific spacing mm -hmm. so that everything bonds right. And so basically these trays hold everything together and then they also have to keep it from drooping too far without blocking the air. And so we use this really, really tiny wire anyway. So it's like manufactured these, just these heat shrink trays that went through, I think seven entire iterations to get wow. to what we now use. Right. That we stick them on those and then we stick those on the belt and then go load another one up and stick those on the belt. And it's just this this process that, uh, but but yeah, I mean all of that stuff, um, all all of the stuff that uh, that we're doing, and that base design is the same. I mean, it's still just a wire with a connector, right? Um, and the interesting thing about that is that a lot of people will tell you that that doesn't work. For sure. various reasons they're gonna of course they're gonna tell you that right uh because you know because it doesn't have enough uh impedance matching because it doesn't sure. have enough and uh and so you know i started out knowing how to make the antenna but yes. not understanding the theory of why it worked oh like, literally when i fa first made these i didn't have I, I i knew i mean i was a technician but i was 16 i mean i right. was like i Grown up hearing about some radio stuff. My my father is a transmitter engineer for K. Well, he was. He's retired now. Last year, uh, for KBYU for like forty years. Right. Um. But uh, and you know, plus is a ham and all that. But so I'm learning the theory. And when you first learn the theory on these, and you think, oh, okay, I'm gonna stick this on an SWR meter and find out what's going on. And so I did. And I yes. have this antenna. Yes. That I know is is good. That I yes. know works. And I put it on my SWR meter, which tells me it's crap. So like, this, I I was definitely getting into this. I want to ask one question before we get into this because this we could we're probably going to yeah. spend the rest of the the, the time talking about this. Uh, Mike KMRD, also a big fan, is in the chat, and he mentioned what's the power limit rating on the signal stick. So 
Th this is something that's hard to, to prove, but uh, Randy, my engineer friend, did the math, and he contests that it that, that it should be fine with 100 watts. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure you said you, that before, because Mike's in there telling everybody, yeah, we're yeah. 100 watts through it. Go that, for that, it. That's yeah. what I have it listed on the website. <laughs> okay, good, um, good. And if you use it at 100 watts and you manage to da damage the antenna, uh, I will replace your antenna. That's covered under warranty, and I want the story. And I want to know what you learned Cheers. because yes. basically the thing you have to realize is that the power limit on most antennas mm -hmm. is basically, basically it's you take whatever part can handle the least amount of power right. and will burn out. Right. That's the, uh, that's the power limit. In the case of the signal stick, it's you not have the piano a connector wire. and you have wire. It actually is the piano wire. Is it? I would think it was the connect, like the uh, the, it, well, the 3D it, it, printed. Well, it might be a little bit. Uh, no, because that doesn't have any power going through it. Oh, that's true. So but it's it's yeah, the okay, wire, okay. and specifically, it's the heat dissipation of the wire. Ah, okay. So the point where you say that this is no longer able to ha handle this power mm -hmm. is the point at which you are operating and the antenna is damaging itself or something around it mm -hmm. from the amount of power that you're putting through it. Ah, okay. But you could argue if it's an open space mm -hmm. that, the, that the signal stick practically doesn't have a power limit because, well, I mean, you might get hot enough to melt the signal to, to melt the heat shrink, but you're right. probably not actually going to damage the wire even still. It would so, still I mean, antenna, even if you lost the yeah, plastic but, bits. It's still an but antenna. But according right? to Randy's math, mm -hmm. it should be able to dissipate the heat. Uh, and I think we said at 50% duty cycle, it should have no trouble dissipating the heat from 100 watts. Um, at 100% duty cycle, it should have no trouble with 50 watts. Okay. I don't know that that has been fully tested. So, you know, just kind of giving full disclosure. But Maybe I will. Maybe I'll test it. Hey, Maybe we'll see. if you do, I, I will actually be very interested in seeing that. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. So I, I want to tell the story because I, I, I love this story. And then you can continue going with where you're at with the SWR because right. it ties in. So my first one that I bought, which is which is right here. Um, where is it? Where's my camera? Hey, camera. Why are you not camera -ing? All right. Well, well, never mind. We'll, we'll come back to that. So we I have a the camera. I, I know. Yeah, of course. A as you said, I said, everything's too smooth on this live stream. You're like, ah, something will break when we get started. There it is. We found it. So uh, I was testing on a live stream. I was testing HT antennas. Right. And what was I doing? I was taking my rig expert antenna analyzer and I was slapping that handheld uh, antenna on it. And I had the diamonds and the Nagoyas and comets and I had the signal stick and I tested them all. And they all had a dip, right? There's there's always a dip somewhere, but they were all kind of, some of them weren't even in the two meter band, right? They were all over the place. And I was, I was talking to you and, and it was Discord chat. And I was like, you know, what's the deal here? And then you kind of introduced me to the world of, well, if everybody, these manufacturers have a different benchmark for a radio, right? For the base handheld radio if they're all slightly different then they might present different impedance at the antenna point and if it doesn't match your antenna analyzer then you're going to show these weird sweeps all over the place because you've got no, no there's no universal constant to compare the antennas to right and that's ultimately what this discussion is what led me to do the signal to strength uh, the SNR test that I do from the park because i realized chasing down the SWR of an HT antenna was kind of fraught and perilous so let's just test the signal strength on a receiver back home and that's kind of how i treated it it's like okay let's get rid of all this SWR stuff cuz it's too big of a hole to fall into and let's just test the power. So you're kind of going down that road. Why is this so complicated, right? If you could explain that from a tuning SWR standpoint. So I will start this by saying that I am not, I am hopefully not the best antenna engineer you will ever talk to. Um, I, I basically learned this because I was trying to understand that myself, right? because I was trying to understand my own antennas. Cause I, I did a bunch of testing with like, well, what if I make it longer? And I found like, well, I can do things that'll make it so that the SWR looks better. And then people are telling me it doesn't work as well. Right. <laughs> um, in some cases. 
And so what I found, and I I found a YouTube video that explained this, and it was actually on uh, tuning a quarter wave antenna using specifically, I think it was my old Riggle uh, tracking generator spectrum analyzer with Viswar Bridge. Um, it was one of their training videos, and I I tried to find this video again, and I haven't mm -hmm. been able to find it lately. Uh, but basically, what they explained is that whatever you add in order to tune the antenna is actually changing the antenna system. Right. And so, in order to get a consistent result, what you need to do is you need to add a RF choke, which keeps the RF from going down past that point. Basically, okay. the RF choke ensures that whatever power goes to goes through it in one direction the same amount of power has to come back the other direction uh which means that anything up to that point it can't radiate other otherwise the two wouldn't equal out and so there's kind of a resistance to it radiating be below that point right the easiest way to do that is to use a uh, a heavy uh ferrite uh a heavy ferrite bead around the like around the rf point the antenna feed point. So, so long day. Sorry. Like if um, it's above, if it's above the uh, antenna analyzer, for instance, like you use a little right. So like if you have a coax line. going to your yeah. antenna, you can put it right below the the connector, mm -hmm. and that's going to isolate it from everything below that. Got it. And now you will get a consistent result, which will tell you that your antenna has an infinite SWR because you don't have any ground plane. Right. So then you have to connect a counterpoise to it, and now you will get a consistent result. Um, although uh, depending on what you use, like if I used a tiger tail and I found that I could tilt it different ways and that tiger tail, depending on how close it was to my arm, things like that. And, you know, your, your dip is just moving up and down and all over the place. Um, but right. the and point you could is, do that. is you that could adjust you need that. a consistent antenna system. Right. And most antenna systems are going to be affected with this type of antenna. Right. Um, because, and, and the reason why is because with these types of antennas, it's actually only half of the antenna. Right. You still need the counterpoise. The counterpoise is coming from coax. It's coming from your HT. It's coming from all sorts of things like that. Just you that holding you basically it? basically can't produce from you holding it. Right. Um, so one of the methods to get around that is to basically build some kind of like a, an HT thing. A, like a, thing ballistic, like a, a ballistic gel human <laughs> holding a, a radio, right? <laughs> Exactly, a ballistic cell human holding a radio yeah. that you're that that has a ferrite in that, so that it's using the uh, it's using the body of that and and the arm basically. So you're isolating everything up to that point, and then uh, and then you use that and you measure that. That's probably the best I've seen as far as being able to measure in a realistic way. But because the problem is, is even if you use the ferrite method, now you will have consistent reading from all of your different SWR meters. But there's no way that that's actually going to be consistent with how you're using your antenna. <laughs> right. So let's say, go back to your example. We got a nice little bench top antenna mount with a ferrite choke. And we've got a, a length of wire as the counterpoise. And it's perfectly balanced, right? You got it right in the sweet spot. And then you disconnect that antenna and you clip it onto your handheld and boop, doesn't transmit very well. And, May and not even receive that well. your antenna system. Right. So how did you get around that with the signal stick and, and all of your luck? <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it really just like we snip a little bit here I mean, and then we try again and snip a little bit more? So like, I mean, honestly, at some point. Right. Unless you're going to build this, up this, this rig. Is, this is the part that, that, that I'm not sure if I should invent in public, but um, the original reason that we started out using this length of antenna is actually because way back when you remember, I told you that we used to use I, I, when I first started doing night and all, mm -hmm. I bought it off of Amazon, mm -hmm. ended up being like five dollars per antenna. Well, that was fifteen dollars for a 36 inch long piece of uh, that's crazy of night and all, right? And the signal sticks are 18 inches long. Uh, okay, so we're <laughs> Okay. So basically, I just did the one that let me get the most of the, you know, the, the most uh, antennas out of the amount that I had. It, but the thing is, is that over the years, I did actually end up making it a little longer. Uh, so the, the length that I actually use for the wire is, I believe, 465 millimeters. 
um, which translates into something like 19 and a quarter inches mm -hmm. or no, 18 and a quarter inches. And, um, and then of course you get some added by the center pin and, you know, it's, but what I found through uh, just a lot of testing, a lot of people using it is that 70 centimeter performance is slightly improved by making it just a little bit shorter mm -hmm. and that it just seems like it works better with a slightly shorter than 19 inch length. Um, I'm not sure honestly why that is. Uh, but I found that, uh, within about an inch, either direction of the length that I have it, I don't see a lot of difference. Yeah. Um, and, but, and my testing but where we're shown, at seems like a pretty good spot. Yeah. My testing has shown that generally it's, it's usually pretty balanced on, on the received signal strength on 70 centimeters and two meters when, when using the signal stick and mm -hmm. just for everybody watching, I, I want you to all put this in your mind. The antenna is the constant. If you buy one of these and you put it on your Kenwood or your Baofeng, or your Yesu, or your Icom, they're all going to present slightly different, right? When you're holding it, even how you transmit on the thing, they're all, it's a its a little fudge factor that goes into HT specifically, because again, they're kind of just meant to go with us everywhere and use them. It's not like we're going to go do a poda and we're going to put up a perfectly balanced dipole for a particular frequency, right? That's the the challenging part. I, I've I've always found fascinating with HTs, but always is a nightmare for me making videos on them because it's like I can't really throw them on a jig because if I do that, I could be telling everybody that oh this antenna is very poorly matched when I put it against a perfect counterpoise. But it turns out that could be the best performing antenna, and then I made that antenna mm -hmm. look really bad on the video. But when it's on an HT, it's the best, right? That's why I was like, no, we got to use signal strength. That's got to be the the focusing point. Yeah. Uh, I love. Thank you for totally explaining. Agree. That. I love. I love that um, uh, history lesson there. And one interesting thing that I found uh, is, and, and you can actually you can find this chart on the the BNC mag mount uh, on our website on mm -hmm. signalstuff.com. There's a link to a SWR chart that I took from the quarter wave signal stick, mm -hmm. um, the the dual band one, and it actually shows a very wide. Uh, a very wide range of below, you know, below two to one, mostly below 1.5 to one. Um, and what I kind of attribute that to is that a lot of people don't realize that coax is actually like a long length of coax can actually mm -hmm. act as an impedance match. Sure. And so when you mount this on a good can on a good ground plane, and then you've got the length of coax going there, um, and, uh, I kind of see that, uh, in a lot of ways, I, I consider that to be one of my most effective tests because I figure anywhere that, ha that looks good in that position means that it is resonant enough that with a little bit of impedance matching, it's going to perform well. Mm -hmm. And since all of the impedance matching that we're using in this case is basically chaos theory. I mean, it's, it's from whatever the environment happens to be. Right. Um, I think it's, you're probably going to have reasonable performance anywhere in that range. Yes. And that's when I started uh, recommending people, you know, what? go ahead and just try it on MERS, go ahead and try it on GMRS and see how it does. Yep. And I've gotten very good reports from that. People tell me that the, both the mono band 440 and the dual band work fantastic on GMRS. It's oh. not intended for GMRS, but Hey, it it works great. They're, Go for they're it. pretty close. They're pretty um, close, the band wise. Yeah. And and honestly, with the way that this is all set up and, and with the, the with how much you can or can't trim it, I mean, I've already mathematically speaking, I'm I've already got a shorter uh length wire than what you would expect. Mm -hmm. So having it work adequately well on the on the higher frequencies actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Um and so yeah, in fact, I had a there's a company contacted me a week or two ago asking about uh, using it for a frequency at 455 megahertz, and they wanted a custom antenna. In fact, they were they were wondering if I would give them some suggestions so they could make their own, and they wanted a half wave, and they wanted uh, you know, which is interesting because most people think that if you just double the length, you now you you have a half wave, it's going to work great. Problem is now you've got two quarter wave sections that are 90 degrees out of phase. They're going to cancel each other out and you've got a dummy load. Um, in fact, you don't quite have a dummy load because a dummy load would at least absorb the, the power instead of reflecting all of it back. So you have nothing. Um, <laughs> that's the reason that I don't make a, uh, that's the reason I don't have a tri-band antenna. And it's the reason that I don't make a half wave 
uh, 440 uh -huh. is because you would need some kind of impedance matching to make that work. And I'm not a good enough antenna engineer to build that. Um, if somebody knows someone who knows how to do that, that would like to uh, to be employed for a time as a consultant to help oh, design a, a tri-band. I mean, I would love to add those to my lineup, but uh, the only designs that I've been able to, to discover or find or come up with are things that I don't have the capacity to build. Uh, and so it's... Uh, so and, and so I don't have that. I've had, uh, I have a couple of mono band two meter half wave antennas and they're, they're by and large, like one of the best performers I've, I've dealt with. Mm -hmm. So now I'm, now I'm curious what's going on there because kind of what you're saying got makes a coil sense. on the base. Either that or it's got a coil halfway up. No, it's, it's got, got a coil well, halfway up. That's I have both perform better. I have both coil in the base and then a, a center loaded, uh, vertical mm -hmm. in the HT variety. So yeah, now you've got me thinking about that i think that's a really good point yeah uh boy okay richard i i expected this would happen we're already like blowing through the time i still have a bunch of questions so you know what that means you got to come back so i can ask you the rest <laughs> of the questions but what i want to do is i want you to talk we've talked about the signal stick and obviously i think most people know about the signal stick but let's hit some of the other products you've got available before we do that let me show off this picture really fast what's happening here what would you say is going on right here with this picture there is so many antennas in this shot. What is what is this? Is this like ready after production right here? This is what it looks like. Uh, so each, that that tray there is a custom 3D printed tray that I built. That's cool. Um, that we use those during manufacturing. I've printed and it's got it's it's held together with two threaded rods through each side mm -hmm. uh, to provide the support, and then they are stackable. Oh, that's cool. And they uh, they have those little notches that hold the antenna. I see that. There's little ridges. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Previously, what we did is uh, whenever I did a, a build party, I would order pizza for everyone. And then yes, we would I use the pizza boxes this. and line up all of the antennas on the top of the pizza boxes, which ended up just being the perfect length. That's true well, ham ingenuity right there. <laughs> at some point, we got talking about how... You know, we really need something better than pizza boxes, especially because uh, sometimes we were getting to where we were making enough that we were running out of pizza boxes. And so I built these and they serve a couple of purposes. So here what you've got is we've just finished injecting the adhesive uh -huh. and this is these are the curing racks, basically. How, so how many are we looking at? So there for about... So uh, if you use the very edges, which it looks like in this one we did, there are 41 per direction, and then they go both directions. They're cross, they're so cross they're, hatched. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're uh, one is one level is one direction is slightly lower level than the other direction, um, and then they're stackable as well, and they have handles that stick out on one on on uh, two sides, opposite sides, so I can actually pick them up and move them as well, and that's, that's the cool. other big thing that this did, which is a bigger deal than you might think. I, I see Lego in the background. Is that Lego? It looks kind of like Lego. It's not Lego. Oh, it's the those ridges. Just, uh, it's, okay. Those are the ridges. Okay. So walk, um, walk me through the, the products here. So you've got, obviously, the, the signal stick, the super elastic. And those mm -hmm. come... Oh, look at the animations. Yeah. The B and C variety, the, the, the HRC-supported B and C variety. But you have all the connector types, right? Yeah. So we've got, uh, we've got, SMA, we've got B and C, SMA male, SMA female. Mm -hmm. um, we've got 12 different colors, uh, glow-in-the-dark... Uh, is one of them. I, I we have, as far as I know, the only fully glow in the dark antenna on the market, um, which nice. is which, which which means it's it actually kind of cool. Yeah, it, it has visibility. increased emissions on the visible spectrum during uh, times of low illumination. Um, <clears throat> so you so could be in the, dark, in the dark and transmit, and it'll light up. No, no, oh, okay. it just it just it just emits in the visible spectrum. Oh. In, the dark okay, i got it i got it the joke went right, right over my head if you have to explain <laughs> it uh that was my bad uh really quick what uh, is your most popular color for the antenna uh you know it's interesting because it depends on the connector uh black is the most popular okay and then glow in the dark is going to be the the second the, the most popular non-black okay. and then on b and c orange is the next after that um and then it kind of varies by connector. Red is usually up there. Green is up there. Um, so the unofficial. I would also love to have it glow when RF is flowing, and I have cool. some thoughts on how to do that. Yeah. But it is beyond my engineering expertise. So the unofficial anyway, HRCC colorway is the black BNC connector 
with the black uh, cu- uh, cup at the bottom, orange heat shrink, and the black tip, or glow in the dark. That's the B and C. That's the recipe. That's well, the one that's you want. The, uh... So this one. That's it. Yeah, that, that's it. That back there, by the way, that is the signal stuff uh, shipping station. Nice. Because everything has to be alliterative. It's it's one of our rules, company rules. Um, so literally, when we ship, that is all of my stock back there on those on those trays. Oh, that's cool. Like that is where we do it. Um, but yeah, so that's the one that he's talking about. Um, and then and if you these these are sometimes tricky to keep in stock, but the, uh, the orange. So yeah. the glow in the dark is the most popular non-black but uh orange is is pretty high up there as well um and in case anybody missed this in the end of november in fact this is the reason that our black friday sale was a week late uh all of the parts uh, there's no longer 3d printed parts it's now all injection molded Uh, i finally had design that stayed static long enough without me changing it that i felt like i could uh immortalize it by spending six grand per part to make molds out of it yeah uh, <laughs> and then we have the uh the adapters so this is the sma male to bnc adapter mm-hmm. and uh yes my female to bnc adapter is around here somewhere but i must have dropped it i had it earlier anyway, so the oh, signal yeah, stick is. signal stick is the ht antenna and then you mm-hmm. have the signal i, I guess you, you, the signal stock is the mobile antenna so you do have a proper mobile antenna to go along with that right yeah so this is the this is the quarter wave signal stock let me hold that and up the camera of course won't yeah won't and that's an on. nmo mount um, with a with a set screw setting right yep nmo mount set screw and this is uh just a quarter quarter wave long antenna and uh, the reason these work for dual band is because a quarter wave on two meters is mathematically a three quarter wave on 70 centimeters, which makes mm-hmm. it work out, work out nicely. Um, so that's nice. Um, you could probably cut these down to a, a 70 centimeter or a 220. And I do know somebody who's done that and he, he says it works well, but it's not something that I sell enough of them to be worthwhile. We also have a half wave uh, version. Um, I'm not as thrilled with how that one's working. Most people, it seems to work really well for them, but I'm getting more reports of pe- from people saying that it didn't work for them than I like. So I'm still, uh, <laughs> Let, let's, only uh, one left in stock. Let's sell an that. antenna. Cause that's going to be um, gone right now. <laughs> there you go. There's only one mobile antenna left. It's gone. Uh, Richard, it's it before gone. it's gone. <laughs> it's um, gone. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, then we also have, uh, this is one that doesn't get a lot of press and it probably should get more. This is, if you're familiar with the Arrow off-centered uh, open yeah. stub J-pole design, yeah. mm-hmm. this is an open stub J-pole. And these things, uh, so this is actually made by a, a local ham who's um, who's also a machinist. And these are solid. I mean, you know, most of them are, are just like aluminum pipe tubes. and they're yeah. kind of flimsy mm-hmm. tubes. This is solid. And uh, and then it's got threads on the ones, you know, thread opening on one side. And so basically these attach together. Oh, that's cool. And, you know, so when it's all put together, it's something like 60 inches tall on on the one side. And And you get to be like James Bond. Solid design. You get to be like James Bond. You can have a little attache case. Look at that. That's super cool. I mean, so normally, you're probably not going to normally take the base all the way apart. This is how it ships, right? which is great because, you know, it's it's nice and easy to, to yeah, send. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot cheaper to send. But uh, normally, you wouldn't take these the middle parts out. So that takes the most space. But um, but that is just, it's a great, it's 2.2 pounds. And uh, so if you just need an antenna, a dual band antenna, you can, that's portable. You can see that one's real portable. So that... we've got those, and then our newest product, uh, as far as like a uh, full product, is the um, the BNC mag mount. And yes, I thought about calling it like the signal stand or something, but the uh, signal stand. Oh, there it is. Si- si- sanity, sanity did uh, did did win out on that one. And I've so that's a BNC that... mag, a BNC mag mount. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. that's a good idea. No, that's a fact, really good idea. That's the, the the great thing about this is because you know, say you've got your uh, you know, so you've got your HT here that's got your BNC adapter on it. You've got your antenna on, and then you want to get in your car. So you right 
you just pop it off of there. Right. And you stick it on the BNC mag mount, and then the BNC mag mount plug it right back in there, and off you go. See? Um, and then if you're concerned about the some of these, the the base isn't quite as insulated as people like. And yeah, so we got uh, yeah. this is a very recent little sheath that you can buy as a as an add-on. It's just this thin rubber goes right onto it. See now you're you're singing the praises of the BNC signal stick, right? You you, you see well, how you versatile know, admit, versatile I've, it is. <laughs> I was kind of iffy about it myself. Yeah, but this is probably one of the best uh, yeah ex excuses for it. And in fact, uh, so this is a product that's brand new, as in I don't even have it on the website yet. This uh -oh. is actually an right, SMA mail to, uh, I don't know how well you can see it. This is an SMA Kinda, mail. Sorta. Part of it is you've got the ups, the, the blurry background going on, so it, it's yeah. making it a little hard for it. That's okay. SMA mail to BNC uh, adapter. Now, okay. maybe you've seen, let's see. You may have seen some commercial versions of this. They look like this. Yeah, the I Amazon think that's special. And annoying I agree. to deal with. I agree. Um, you know, so uh, instead of that, I yeah, had them customize like it. Yeah. Because once once you're having connectors custom, you know, connectors customized, having them customize adapters. Oh too. yeah, look at that. That's great. And so that just goes right on there. And that's and obviously not a signal you can stick. Use that that incredibly oh, high quality Baofeng 440 only antenna. <laughs> I mean, you should never, ever do this, but you can, and that's the point. It's ham radio, um, so we can do it, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I don't have the other gender yet, um, but I just got the shipping a tracking number for it today. And so I will have these, and, and I'm not actually intending... Yes, I will join the after chat. I, I'm ah, not right. intending that people use this. I'm worried that people are going to take their stock antenna put it on this and then use it with their BNC adapter. Don't, don't do just, that. Just That's don't. Too just many don't adapters. do that, okay? Too many adapters. Um, but, uh, but you could. <laughs> you, you could. could. You could. Um, so I, but, but uh, you know, so the other direction is going to look kind of similar. It's, uh, and it's, Again, you know, the commercial ones have are they're about this tall. Yep. And the ones that I've customized I hate. are a little shorter. I use and, those in the shack. Uh, are black. I use those in the shack because, you know, just to, to do the change up that you have to do for some things. But you, when you're you talking in HT, you need the flush base one. Yeah. So you don't put that load on it because you get that side load. You'll and, snap it. And this is kind of funny because uh, I, I love that. Great look. And, uh, and so they put this little rubber piece that I, yep. I got added to our other SMA mail adapter on. And I don't think that's ever actually going to be useful. But they're there, so I'm not having them take it off. Yeah. The, so if uh, it's useful, great. And if it's not useful, you can just pull it off. Right. Com <laughs> Comet puts theirs on on their SMA to BNC adapters. And I never understood why, but, you know, whatever. It, I guess it looks kind of smooth. I, I don't know. We got a bunch anyway, of questions. So, uh, so that one's going to be coming out. Uh, as, as soon as I have the other gender as well, I'll yeah. list those both. Awesome. And they'll be the same price as our other adapters. We got a bunch of questions. By the way, everybody, if we didn't ask your questions yet, uh, retype them. But make sure you put the word question or tag me, Ham Radio Crash Course. But Digital Dreamer has asked us a couple of times. Do you ship to Hawaii? I ship anywhere that USPS or UPS can ship to. And so the, the website will automatically calculate shipping. And uh, I can't promise that the shipping will be reasonable because it will be whatever yes. my shipping price is. Yes. Which so that sometimes sucks. But. That was another question, which is international shipping obviously is going to get pricey to the point that like a $25 antenna almost becomes unreasonable when you hit it with, you know, $40 a shipping charge. So, Recently, somebody from, I think they were in Canada, posted on Reddit and said, hey, is the signal stick really worth $35? And I responded and I said, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, have you ever thought about reaching to uh, reaching out to somebody like RNL in the UK and see if you could just send them a bunch of your, you know, black I've, or assorted colors and have them just blow through them? I I've, think they I've would. had some. I've had some interest, and I've had mm -hmm. some people talk, you know, offer. Um, the problem is that my margins are so slim mm -hmm. that uh, that it's just hard to make that really sure. profitable. At the very least, they'd have to increase the price there, which might be fine. Um, and I just don't have any experience with that. So, I mean, sure. if somebody came to me and said, here, I have this plan. This is what I want to do. This is how I think it'll work. Um, I'd be happy to talk to them about it. I'm very much open to the idea, but I don't currently have any resellers. 
Um, and honestly, I'm a little bit concerned with being able to keep up with demand. Like I've thought about posting, putting them on Amazon a few times, but as soon as I put it on Amazon, I lose probably at least 15, maybe 20%. Yeah. The margins um, are huge on Amazon. They, they and, suck uh, just immediately. Mm -hmm. And so I'd have to increase the price. And then I'm actually just as worried about it doing really well. <laughs> it's not doing well enough because if we suddenly doubled the number of antennas they were asking for, I can't keep up with that right now. Yep. Um, I mean, I can I can work my way up to that. And we've been, I mean, we sold we sold thirteen thousand signal sticks last year, which is mind blowing. Uh, but you guys understand that thirteen thousand signal sticks that is awesome. That is awesome. It's it, it's enough that I've been able to uh, you know during in the middle of COVID, I was able to drop to part time at my at my main job and work on. Um, and work, uh, and, and I'm I'm half time now working on signal stuff and ham studying exam tools, um, and that's what let me kind of keep up with all of the demands with uh, for remote testing. I don't know if everyone on is aware that uh, almost all of the remote testing goes through exam tools, which is also supported by signal stuff. It, I mean, literally, the reason I can do all of it is because all of these antenna sales are making it possible for me to pay for hosting and servers and my office and and you know half my salary at this point like literally this is the only reason that I can that I can keep building and making ham study free and keeping exam tools I ask for contributions but I'm not requiring it from anyone because I want testing to get into the new century you know um and uh and it's it's been amazing to see all the growth on that so that's just crazy. I completely forgot that we started off talking about ham study and exam tools. So you have to come back just to talk about that. We have to limit ourselves on a very specific uh, topic because we blew through that <laughs> Sorry, hour. I'm not We're, good at that. No, no, I, I, I'm not either because I've just been we've just been jamming on this whole thing. So there's a ton of questions. A big one I saw a couple of times people ask: Any plans for a PL two fifty nine signal stick? Um, signal stick or signal stock? So, I mean, a signal stick. Yes. How about field them both? What do you think? <laughs> signal um, stock probably though. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're talking about the, the mobile version, I've actually tried to find one. The problem is, so I, I don't have the capability to build any of the parts for those. Um, sure. and so what I did with this one is I hunted around and it took a lot of time, which that's always time taken away from why I actually do this, which is so I, you know, working on ham study and exam tools. Right. That's the other thing I always have to balance with new products is like, I'm not really in this to make money selling antennas. I'm in this to build the to software ham study that I feel like the, yes. the, the ham radio community needs. Um, but uh, so I found a company that sold an antenna that was basically exactly what I wanted, except that it was not night and all. Oh. And I convinced them to sell me wholesale, you know, the parts wholesale, the bit, and to sell it to me without the wire, and to add the the things. And then I got the wire from a different company, and uh, and so basically, I order the different parts and I put them together, and you know, and and we got this little tip thing here, uh, which is just a vinyl cap that I got off, literally that I buy off of eBay. Uh, <laughs> and uh i love the ingenuity and that's and that's how the signal st the signal stock came from because people kept asking for that because they wanted something especially for like off-roading and that's really what the signal yes. stock was intended for is yes. so you have something that can hit a tree and generally yep. be okay i mean yep. it's not invincible but it's right. gonna hold up a lot better than stainless steel would L lifetime warranty um, so though on the signal stock no, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But I'll if if it breaks, contact me. I'll see what I can do to, to at least well, there find you go. a discounted there you way go. To, to replace the parts or something. I, that happens a few times, and 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 I'll I'll do what I can. Sure. Uh, I at least guarantee that the parts are not going to be defective, or I'll I'll replace things. Right. Um. But anyway, from all of that, that same company had some PL two fifty nine ones. And I was just not happy with the performance on it. The cue, with, like the, the notch was really, really, really narrow. Oh. And I had a hard time getting it in the spot where I wanted. And so I I did try. I, I ordered several different times, uh, several different parts to try to make that happen. And I even was looking at uh, one possibility for a tri-band. But frankly, none of them were good enough. Like some of them would have worked, but none of them were good enough that I would have been willing to use it on my vehicle. And so I'm not going to sell it. Okay. So Questions. maybe someday. 
Well, there you go. Appreciate you walking us through that. Will Richard be at Hamcation this year? I will not. I I might someday, but uh, when you have five kids and you I... live on in Utah, you have to really be careful about committing to going to things on the East Coast um, that take multiple days away from the family. Yep. Especially because I mean, just Hamvention. I've been to Hamvention now, I think, four or five times. Mm -hmm. And if I can manage to break away long enough to have conversations with, like, heads of VECs and vendors that I need, like, networking opportunities that are half the reason that I go there, yeah. that's impressive. Like, I spend my entire time just talking to people. And I never break, I, I've never been to a single panel because I don't have time. And that's with, that's with three other people with me, at least. We took six one year. And thinking that then we can trade off, we yep. still didn't. We all stayed at the booth and talked to people the whole time. I can attest I just, this. It's too expensive. I can attest this because <laughs> it has been two Hamventions now that I have, you know, cruised around the booth a couple of times to shoot a quick video with you. And you've always been slammed with people talking to you constantly. Or you were looked exhausted trying to eat food. <laughs> <laughs> tried to survive uh, that was the other time i get it i get it completely you, you just have to break in and we'll we'll figure it out. i love it man i love well we could just do it live like but, we're doing uh, right now uh, yeah, i mean honestly at hamvention my goal with sales i mean i take signal sticks my goal with ham hamvention is to try to break even i don't ever yeah. make money on that yeah i try to cover the cost because it's i mean it's if you're dragging six, to 10, six people out there after you're, you're taking, you know, all the airfare and hotels and everything. So at Hamcation, I'm, I'm, I probably, I'm not certain, I'm not confident that I could break even. I could see that. And it's just one more thing at a hard time of the year. Yeah. So I get it. I may at some point, I'd like to, but I don't currently have plans to do so. I get it. I understand. So this is a question, and, th and, and this is a variation of a couple of questions that people have brought up. Have you ever thought about making like a quarter wave 10 meter or quarter wave 6 meter antenna? I've thought about it. The problem is, is that even, uh, and, and I, I wish I'd gone out and grabbed it's my a lot of material at that point. Now you're really well, it's, it's a lot of material and it's getting really expensive. Yeah. Um, I mean, my margins are ludicrously low for a for a manufacturer. For uh, I mean, generally people will, will expect like at least five to ten times to to make it consistently supportable. Mm -hmm. And just the wire on this, just the wire, costs something like seven dollars. Wow. Um. And so, and then you know, That's if anything ever goes wrong with it, and I'm right. replacing it, and I mean, it's. So it, it does get expensive really fast. But the other thing is that it just doesn't hold itself up all that well at longer lengths. So it starts to get you know, a, little, the a old, little sad at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th this is the old, the, the thinner wire that we used to use before, uh, I think, 2018. That's, I've got and one of those. It's already, it's already pretty flimsy. If you were to make it, because a quarter wave is mm -hmm. going to be about that long, and it's not even going to stay up. Mm -hmm. It's not even going to be vertical. Even I, I, even with three millimeter, which is what the the base of the half wave stock is, it still doesn't stay up. Yep. And the resistivity of nitinol is so high that I'm concerned that if you make it that long, it's it may not perform very well anymore. Oh, sure. And so yeah. that's a whole other yeah, problem. Yeah, kind of with it. all of that. Then you start looking it's, at bigger it's gauges. It's not something I'm completely unwilling to consider. It's mm -hmm. just. And if you add thought all about that to what I've said before about the my main goal is not actually to sell antennas. My right. main goal is to build software. Have you ever thought about doubling the gauge, just increasing the gauge of the wire? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, th so the this quarter wave, this is two and a half millimeter, and around here somewhere I've got some two uh, two millimeter. Mm -hmm. Um. And we did, I mean, we we used 1.5. We started with 1.1 millimeter. Now we're up to 1.5 millimeter. Now that I'm customizing things, we could increase it more. Uh, but I feel like the point we are at now is a good, it's, it's rigid enough that it doesn't oscillate as badly and it holds up pretty well. But you get any, any thicker and you can't coil it as tightly. Right. And it'll start hold it like remembering shape more quickly sure and so there's some downsides to doing that as well I, i'm thinking um, for I, like I feel mobile. like where we're at is a. I, i'm thinking but, for like uh, mobile if you do like a yeah. 10 meter then you're talking more like a mobile like a signal stock right yeah. and that's going to be well a i mean bigger. The, the signal stock is already two and a half and three okay gotcha. and uh and even that which is pretty thick 
is not thick enough that a uh, that that a two and a half meter long thing is going to hold up to any kind of freeway winds. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, question: Is the BNC magnetic mount okay in the rain? Probably. <laughs> Maybe. This is one of those where sure. Um, <laughs> I can I can tell you that like inside this is going to be fine. They've actually got a lot of sealant around the like on the inside around the the connector that it's not going to get any into the coax. Uh-huh. Um I'm not as confident. So the one the one downside that the BNC connector does have over the SMA, SMA connectors if they're properly built are waterproof. Okay. And BNC is not as right. far as I know. Yeah. So uh, do, you don't do you treat that thing as like a forever mag mount or is it something that you kind of like put on your car and then take off? I, I think that's a perfect travel setup. Like you throw that on a rental car I, and get on with it. I don't. Yeah. I don't recommend ever using a mag mount for uh, as a long term thing. Sure. Um, you're going you are going to damage your vehicle if you keep a mag mount on long. The surface, period. Yeah. Like yeah. there's just there's no there's no getting around that. Uh, you will eventually get dust underneath it, no matter how careful you are, even if you put some kind of a, well, I have heard some, some clever ideas, like you could put some kind of a special sticker on underneath it that protects the specially designed to protect the paint or something. So maybe you could do that. And if you did that, then it could be a, like a forever thing. Okay. Potentially. Yeah, sure. But the main thing that I have intended it for is, uh, you know, I help out with a lot of little races and stuff, like a, a half marathon up the canyon or stuff. Here in Utah, we've got a lot of uh, canyons and mountains where there's no cell phone service up there. Oh, sure. And so one of the ones I help with, a lot of times we'll have somebody shadowing like the race director. And so the BNC mag mount has been great as a, oh, grab this, stick the antenna on, here's an adapter, go. And I just give that to a new ham, whoever's helping out with that. And they can hop in the car, slap it on the roof, and yep. off they go. Yep. And they get out, they just pop it out, stick it on. It's really intended as the grab and go fast. You know, this is just, this is not what I, you know, do all the time, but it's a, I now have an option because just like even your rubber duck, mm -hmm. if you just get it outside the vehicle and onto the roof, you're going to get like 10 times yes. the, the yes. performance out of it. Just, just like that, because you're no longer sitting inside a metal cage. I, I'm, I'm thinking, and you're getting the ele elevation. I, I already see a perfect reason for this: is it packs up so small. It's the perfect like rental car ham fest setup for everybody that like oh, yeah. me that I travel to all the the major <laughs> ham fests. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm literally got this in my shopping cart right now. I'm gonna throw that on the roof of the rental car <laughs> and put the signal stick on it, and it's just that's it. That's the there's the antenna. I'm all set oh, for. I, yeah. I think I saw K8 MRD here. Uh, he did a he did a video on that uh, last year sometime, mm -hmm. and that's basically what he said. He's like, I just take this, I stick it, goes in my in my jump kit, and yeah, I mean it's 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 just the perfect grab and go option if yeah. you're already using BNC on everything. It, it's a and good. That's, I, I, I think it's worth reiterating the MCOM mention too. So for Aries, Racies, that's a great little thing to just mm -hmm. have in your bag because it's not very big. And then you just boom, you're on top. So you, you actually got a really nice ground plane underneath a vehicle like that. And even your little handheld antenna, your signal stick is going to be just fine. So I like it. Yeah. Uh, this is a semi-complicated question, but what is your general turn turnaround time restocking on certain color combinations? I wanted to buy a couple, but the color was out, so I'm holding because I hate placing an order on, on a back order or something like that. So I guess it depends on... you got a lot of color the, options. I think the longest that I've had a back order go in the last... No, I did have one that last that, that was two weeks before I could ship it. That was around I was somebody who placed an order uh, in early November, mm -hmm. and it was because I was not making new. I, I stopped making BNC and SMA mail because I had I, I like I'd seen the video of the new injection molded parts. I knew that they were good. I knew, knew oh, that they were coming, and so I right. decided not to make anything new until I got the new parts. Yeah. Um. And then shortly after that, I just stopped accepting back orders on those because the uh, the parts were shipped and then they got stuck in a seven day quarantine in a city in China. Um, and so but most often it, it is very, very rare for it to take me longer than a week to, to ship something that's back ordered um, unless I am out of parts on it. And then I try to always put up a, a warning. I actually I say within two weeks and I 
uh, other than that one case where I actually sent out an email to everyone letting them know, look, this is what's going on and here's some options. And I did actually even offer, I will make you one with the old parts if you want. But that's the only time in the last like four or five years that it's taken me longer than two weeks to uh, to get something that was backward or shipped. Okay. Um, usually, if I'm actually out of something and I've got back orders, I'll I'll make a new batch within a couple of days. Okay. Um, there you go. So, like, I I don't think I'm actually out of. Well, I might be out of green SMA mail right now, but I've got a bunch that just need adhesive out in the garage that are mostly made. So, if I had back orders on that, I'd probably just go out and and finish a dozen or so of them. So, so here, here, here's an interesting one. Are you ready for this one? This is from Ray right. Davidson. Ray Davidson asked question. MLNS in the UK would be more than happy to be a sole UK importer of these antennas. What do you say? <laughs> Send me an email with a proposal. I'm willing to talk about it. So again, uh, we'll, we'll pull up the website. Hold on. Let me get, make sure. Oh, that's my cart. <laughs> I got, <laughs> I'm now looking at, my, I'm looking at my shopping cart. <laughs> Hold make, on. Make sure you put lots of stuff in there before you put that on the. Uh... <laughs> so, uh, where does one contact you on the website? Is there a, a spot there somewhere for contact? Um, probably not. How about <laughs> hamstudy.org? Is there a contact? But if sheet? just uh, orders or sales or support at signalstuff.com. Okay, orders or sales at signalstuff .com. or sales at signalstuff.com. There you go. Yeah. Reach out. Orders at signalstuff.com is the is the one that I put on all of the order things to say, you know, if you have any concerns on that. But those are basically all aliases. Oh, I love that. that MLNS. If that's you guys. Uh, I think I said RNL, but RNL is in Texas. I meant MLNS if that's what I meant. If I said, I apologize. Uh, let's see. Question, how long until you run out of people to buy them? Everyone will have one in a few years. Well, no, you need multiple. You got both. No one has one HT. Come on. So, you know, that's actually a funny question that I've been asking myself for the last decade. Um, I bet. I bet. Especially because you, know, you got to remember that the first time I asked that to ask myself that, I was thinking, so at what point do I hit market saturation here in Utah? Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I mean, I've been selling them in Utah a lot longer than I've been selling them online. Sure. Yeah. Um, and every year I go to the biggest swap meet and I sell about the same number year after year. That's wild. So that's cool. I mean, I've been having the same question, but we haven't hit it yet. So I'll let you know. I mean, last year we are our, our uh, year yearly revenue increased by twenty percent, mostly because uh, of the, the the previous year had these four weeks that were complete outliers from everything else. Right from the uh, from from that other uh, pod pod uh, yeah the video from the other video that you yeah. did. Um, but uh, I mean, so far, 20% growth year to year is pretty insane. That's, and that's the lowest that we've had that's since insane. I started putting it online. Like that's insane. For the first five years, it was more like 60 to 90% growth that is insane. for year, oh, man. year, year after year. And it's like, I mean, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away. I, I that's did awesome. not intend to build a company the, of this size. Like this was just something that I was doing to help pay for servers. Right. And now it's helping pay for me to be able to do development. That's... Now it's like, I'm looking at in the next year, I might actually be able to hire a, a software developer to help me with some of this stuff. I mean, that's... it's, it's a very real possibility. And now you're back into software management. Do you see how quickly it's come full circle? <laughs> now you're managing projects again as a software engineer. <laughs> So there's a, a question that came in on Discord. Thanks, uh, Shane64. How flaccid does the one half wave signal stock get? I'm interested, but I don't like uh, to roll a half mass. So yes, uh, in case you don't know, the signal stick, and now we're asking about the signal stock, if it's very cold, and you, you can talk more about this, but if it's very cold, it can get droopy, which... Oddly enough, I had somebody from Alaska, I think, commented on this video before we even went live. He was like, I'd much rather have the antenna go droopy on me, which then just snaps back when it warms up, versus the antennas I've used in super cold that become brittle and break almost instantly when I bump it against something, which that, that was is, the comment. 
that is the weirdest thing about Night and all. And mm -hmm. in fact, if you look around on YouTube, there's some videos about Night and all where in the 80s they were actually looking into the possibility of making engines that operate on this principle. Where when Night and all gets really cold, it transitions into a state where it's more soft and can actually, That's in wild. fact, it's it's sometimes called shape memory alloy is basically it's the same thing it's just slightly different proportions which changes the temperature ranges that's now cool. i haven't really publicized this widely and and i'll probably never admit it in public but i changed what wire i used you are public right uh, now. i just want you to know what? <laughs> this is live what <laughs> this is <laughs> I, I love slipping that into, uh, yeah, into yeah, yeah. live streams and yeah. watching people's reactions. It's great. Um, <laughs> but uh, I actually, so we were using nitinol with an AF temperature, and I honestly don't remember uh -oh. what AF stands your, for. That. Your uh, Zoom is freaking out. Wow. There we go. It caught up. That was pretty cool, though. That was pretty cool. It, 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 was, it, it was a good dance. That was, yeah, yeah that was, we should have played a backing track on that one. <laughs> that was impressive. We, we, we definitely needed some, uh, some kind of a beat. Yeah, it was uh, a max anyway. headroom move that you just um, did right there. <laughs> But the so the wire should be good for to colder temperatures, even like all of my wire. And I did some experimenting with a different type of wire, which was uh, not actually um, night and all. It was a slight variation on night and all that was good down to minus 20 C. The stuff I'm using oh. now is good down to minus 10 C. And I think the stuff I was using before was good to positive 10 C. So and that's before it starts transitioning. Right. So uh, the the low temp half wave is also the minus 10 C. Okay. And the signal sticks, all of the new ones at this point, um, I'm pretty sure I've gotten rid of all of my stock that was made with the old wire at this point. That's why I didn't make a big deal about it is because I still had some that was the other. So I just figured, sure. well, if it happens to be better than you're expecting, you'll probably be okay with that. That's mm -hmm. my, usually my usual philosophy when I change things. Mm -hmm. Um but uh, if it gets cold enough, it will still get droopy. And I have seen them basically lay over like in half. But uh, it has to be pretty cold, probably like minus around minus 20 to minus 25 C before it gets yeah. to that point with the low temp version. Um, with the medium temp version, honestly, some of the medium temp is the one is, is actually probably the lower temp and some of it's not, they look exactly the same. And I think what happened is, uh, there was a miscommunication. And so when I ordered it, I thought I was ordering the lower stuff, but I hadn't, wasn't very specific. And so the manufacturer sent me the other, and that is one of the, one of the dangers for me in doing these new products because I mean, I ended up with seven thousand dollars worth of wire that doesn't perform as well in low temperatures as what I was ex as as what I wow. tested with. Sure. Um. But uh. But yeah, I I have seen it to where it was you know pretty much like in half. Yeah, and if you hit the, some wind load on it as you're driving, stuff. so that that is a consideration. Um, but that's that's only in relatively, you know, so that, that would be in sub-freezing temperatures mm -hmm. and the low temp, it would be in like way sub-freezing temperatures. You can definitely still hit there, especially in, in areas where it gets really cold. Um, and I've spent some time in Siberia, so I know what really cold actually is. I'm aware that it's out there. I've done the whole inhale through your nose and feel all your nose hairs freeze oh, thing. Yeah. Um, but uh but most people, most places don't see that. And I think, you know, the low temp, you're never going to see anything like that around here. And even the regular temp, even though I saw it sometimes in Utah, I mm -hmm. didn't see it very often. Okay. Uh, we got a ton of questions, but we're already 30 minutes over. So I encourage everybody to join us on the after chat because then you can just ask your questions live, either text or on voice because Richard's going to join us and it's going to be a voice chat. But there's there's two more that I want to ask, and, and I, I think these are good. Uh, question, do you have a Hall of Fame for warranty claims? What's the craziest thing someone did to a signal stick that you had a warranty claim on? You know, I really should keep a hall of fame. A hall of fame. Um, I had one where a, a horse bit it in half. <laughs> okay, that that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't now, mess that with was horses, man. Don't mess with horses. Ones. I don't know if I don't know if a horse would be able to bite the night in half. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, if any of you have tried cutting night and all, but uh, somewhere I have a picture of some heavy duty lineman's pliers mm -hmm. that one of the handles sheared like just broke 
off uh, from when I was testing, when I was originally testing the uh, signal stocks and trimming really? that two and a half and the three millimeter stuff. Mm-hmm. It is that hard. Like it, it is, just... is that because of the heat transfer? Once you start applying the, the pressure to it on those cutting edges, it actually heats up and then it becomes more rigid um, or is it a hardness no, factor? It's, it's, it's the hardness factor. It's is just, it? It, it required that much force to, uh, to do it. I mean, it's, it's hard enough that when it finally breaks, like mm-hmm. I have to be careful what wire cutters I'm using. I will hurt my hand from the sudden force of it letting go and and smashing in like it hurts wow uh, i've had to learn how to how to be careful with that um but anyway I, i've also seen a lot of cases uh there was one somebody and this is actually this is not a warranty claim somebody actually lost their ht antenna mm-hmm. in a field looked all over the place couldn't find it a year later at a kid's activity was in the same field looked down and found it Stuck it on their HT and it still worked. Um, That's pretty cool. That's a cool story. That's and uh, cool. and I got a picture the other week of one that survived a forest fire. Wow! Like, I'm sure it wasn't in the in the main heat of the fire. Sure. But, like as a picture of the HT and the HT is like swollen and exploded, and there's like heat damage all over up and down it, and the antenna is mostly just fine. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Uh, and last, he was like, I'll recommend this to all my firefighter friends. And I was like, okay, that's I'm cool. cool with that. <laughs> last question: uh, Do you get to sleep? Uh, asked Rich, uh, Chris Ritchie. <laughs> sleep. Um, <laughs> five kids, guys. Five kids. That's I impressive. think I remember something called I sleep remember, from back before my, my children were born. Yeah. My my youngest child uh, is um, she'll be three in February. Oh, what's your old? How old's your oldest? I, my oldest is the one who does most of the packing, and he's thirteen. Oh, that's a that's, um, a, but, that's a good range you got going on. Yeah, <clears throat> um, and uh, and I've, I've got three boys and two girls. The, the girls are the younger. Um, but my youngest child, Jenna, is she's absolutely adorable, and she has not slept consistently through the night more than two nights in a row her entire life so far. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's fun. I've so I remember that. <laughs> yeah, so sleep is kind of uh, is one of those things. I I hear you, man. I get it. Well, I I I I only hear part of it, I guess, because I don't have five children. I have two boys, and they they're enough. I I don't know that I would do with let alone th- three, let alone five. So, Richard, it has been fantastic having you on the show. I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, thank you again uh, in advance for joining us on the after chat. For everybody, we're gonna go to the Discord. I will be live streaming the after chat. It will be a separate live stream on top of this one, where we're gonna try and focus our questions in the beginning for Richard and all the things you want to ask but it's a general ham radio question after chat trying to get you all accustomed with ham radio get you comfortable with getting on the air and all that stuff so Richard thanks again I appreciate you man anything you want to mention before we wrap up anything you want to mention before we wrap up just thank you I mean HRCC has been for years now one of the uh, strongest supporters of all of my products and I really do appreciate it Um, there are basically when I have product ideas or, or cool stuff that I've been working on, there are two places that I talk about it these days. Um, one of them is the HRCC discord and the other one is the, uh, volunteer examiner discord. And, and honestly, that's more than anything else because I basically run that discord. And so I pay more attention to it. Sure. So it's, uh, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. I I think actually, you know, I, I did just remember one more thing I wanted to mention. Here we go. Um, All right. You still have the Zoom chat up? I do. Oh, here we go, guys. We're getting some. You want to post that coupon code somewhere? Oh, coupon code. That is yeah, good. Yeah, buddy. I, I did not tell Josh I was doing this. And I I, yeah. All right. Um, That is good for 5% off any signal stick, any number of signal sticks. Now, I have no idea what that's going to do. Uh, overall, like with the bulk discounts, I didn't even test. I, I don't know. It is, it's WordPress, WooCommerce. It's annoying, but Hey, you know, it's a coupon code. Um, and it's good until I think I said it good through the end of tomorrow night. So the end, end of day tomorrow. Awesome. So 5% that off is, and, if you and, use the coupon code. And, and also that, uh, that is linked to the ham radio crash course affiliate link. So anything you put that on is going to get the, uh, the affiliate 
credit to uh, HRCC Oh, as well. thank you. Appreciate that. So there you go, guys. I, I sent it a couple of times. So uh, you said 5% off? Yeah. That's a sweet I think that's deal. what I did. That's a sweet deal. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Thank you for uh, for doing that. Okay, cool. We'll see everybody that stuck around. People have already started dipping out of here. See, if you if you leave early, you won't get the uh, the, the hot deals. I like that. <laughs> All right, uh, Richard, we're gonna go to the after chat. I will meet you over there. All Feel right. free to get. By the way, everybody, uh, I, it usually takes me 10, 15 minutes or so to flip everything around. So, uh, Richard's heading over there right now. If you guys want to ask questions, end of day go Monday. Ahead and start. End of the day coupons Monday. Coupons go through the end of day Monday. Excellent. All right, everybody. Richard, thanks again. I'm going to wrap things up over here. So, guys, thank you so much. That was a whole lot of fun. Uh, I I knew that this would be a blast because just just the, the, the fun times I get to chat with Richard, there's always some, like, I know that there's, like, all kinds of stuff we could talk about. This was just one example. We still got to talk about ham study. We still got to talk about exam tools. So he'll be back again. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll play you out with the memes. 73. Give me a thumbs up if you hadn't already and you're still out there. Thanks so much. See ya.